Well, a poll carried out in the last few days shows Harry's popularity has dropped to an all-time low. The YouGov survey says almost two-thirds of people in the UK have a negative view of him. But what about the future of the royal family as a whole? Joining me now are Dr Tessa Dunlop, historian and author of Elizabeth and Philip, and Kehinde Andrews, professor of black studies at Birmingham City University, who also featured in the Netflix documentary Harry and Meghan. So, is he taking the rest of them down with him? Hopefully. I mean, I, I mean, I think what this shows is once you pull back the curtain, this, the royal family is the Kardashians with crowns. It's this, mon, it's this mundane, posh family. And why on earth in the 21st century are we even in, entertaining any of this nonsense? Well, it does keep people entertained, doesn't it? I think it does more than that. I mean, we've established that he is, in terms of uh, his anti-monarchy beliefs, A for atheist, and I'm B for believer, but believer light. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I realise, and I think I've realised ever since the Oprah interview, when suddenly the monarchy appeared imperiled once again, there was a blip, you'll remember, I could be forget, in the 90s, that actually, um, when you think something might be imperiled, you then uh, appreciate the value of it. Mm. And... I, I like the separation of ceremonial from political. I don't want the likes of Boris Johnson in a golden carriage. But does the I ceremonial have any credibility when Harry has said that. it was all a sham? <laughs> but, I wasn't really exactly. the best man, you know, he wasn't, you know, all that kind of stuff. And therein lies the problem. It becomes jaundice, and I think it's deeper than that. It's more worrying than that. It's the way in which we've been cleaved into different camps. The Conservative press have parked their tanks on the lawn of Prince Charles, or King Charles, rather, sorry, now, <laughs> whether he likes it or not. So suddenly, a guy who's probably underneath it all a bit woolly and liberal, you know, appears sort of quite hard right because of the cloak that he's been wrapped in. And on the other hand, sort of younger people, I suppose... Younger, um, mainly, mainly black, young, I don't know who the supporters of Harry and Meghan, global, mm -hmm. um, are parked on, on the other side of the lawn. I mean, can, can, if, so what if they are just posh Kardashians? I mean, mean they, have, they, have a, they have a constitutional role which they can continue to perform. Yeah. Most yeah. people don't want more politicians. Well, we... So, you know, so what's wrong with them being well, a soap is, opera? This is the thing, you can't separate the ceremony from the constitution. Our head of state is Charles and is going to be William. And you have to wonder why. What do they represent? The whiteness of the royal family isn't accidental. It's on purpose. That's why Meghan was such an addition to it. That's why they're having all these issues of institutional racism or unconscious bias. But what do you make of his unconscious bias distinction? I mean, I don't get it. I mean, um, I mean do you understand what he means? I understand what he means, but he's entirely wrong, right? You cannot separate unconscious bias from racism. Unconscious bias comes out of racism. So because you're in this institution where these things are fine, you're going to go and attack a, a black woman and ask her where she's from and, and, and harass her because that's the culture of the institution. So you can't separate these things. Do, do you understand what he means by this? I'm, I, I'm not a racist, but I did have a unconscious bias. I think I, I watched him fall into that rabbit hole last night and I had my heart in my hands. I mean, it, it was just stay, stay away, Harry. You're a white prince. Just back off. <laughs> but, but I think I remember Virginia Woolf wrote that we have this insatiable desire uh, to watch the royal family because they live and we live in them. And actually, there is something about this white British family going through the narrative of a black woman marrying into their family, and in, in them we live. I'm married to, to an immigrant. I've had, not similar because he's white, he's Romanian, but also difficult conversations around culture. I think huge numbers of Brits now have had conversations, and again, we're living through them. We've had sibling arguments. And so there is an aspect where, and we feel their pain, bereavement. I thought that a large part of last night's documentary was about pain and Harry's yes. pain at losing his mother. So, so then put cameras in the palace, make real housewives of Windsor, let's make them celebrities. They shouldn't be paid for by tax Players money and they shouldn't have a constitutional but, role. The emperor has no clothes. This is a, this credit Harry for showing how mundane and banal of this whole thing is. They'll look at those opinion polls and they'll they'll think this has gone really badly for Harry and Meghan and the royal family is going to be okay. They're yeah. wrong. They're wrong. The danger is that our royal family serves us not just at home but abroad. He's king, by the way, in 15 realms, 14 other ones. How's this going down there? He's head of the Commonwealth. And so the, the problem is, yeah, maybe they've bunkered up, assured up a right conservative support, which is always there for them anyway. But actually, as a weapon for us overseas, soft power, <laughs> we're damaged. Are we, are we, are we, literally, let's just go back to the emperor. We have a, a, a empire, weapons overseas, these 15... Who should not possibly so have the queen and the head, king so of the head of state. That's their decision, will accelerate it? moves towards republics? In, oh, certainly. I think if you look, Commonwealth. At, if you look at what's the happened... Caribbean, Australia, you know... Yeah, I think the death of the Queen, certainly. I think if you look at all this drama, if you look at the, just how out of touch William and Kate are, 
I think if you look in the Caribbean, if you look at places like that, they are saying, why, why on earth would these represent us? And they don't. And I think he's right. They should have, the Commonwealth should have gone a long time ago. That's just the form of... Well, I, I, dis I disagree there. I think people conflating the empire of the Commonwealth, understandably, because one handed to the other, but it is a, a voluntary collection it's of countries. Voluntary. It's away from the hoof of America. It's somewhere where we could have soft power and influence. It is a talking shop. Well, and one that... Britain, we, we're in Britain. I live in Britain. Well, I know. I would say I speak for a, a millions of people in this country, particularly black and brown people, who that family represents nothing but racism. But what about and the should have been gone a long time. Talk... Commonwealth the same. A I way think... in which of having connection with countries that are otherwise disparate. What? Something that isn't NATO or the UN with America this, at the helm. It's the British Empire. Why would that be better it's than not NATO? The British of course Empire. it is. What was it that... came out of the British Empire? It is do, a do relic you think, of I mean, as a monarchist lies, yeah. they can survive this without addressing it. No, they need to address it. They need to they come out and say something, do an interview. I mean, what do they do? The olden days, it was stum. You know, don't say anything. Whether it was your, your, your Crawfee the nanny, she was, you know, persona non grata for the rest of her life, or indeed the Duke of Windsor. But I think now you can't look that unfeeling, especially not because they need to hook in younger generations eventually when these younger generations grow up. I think they're going to have to invite to the coronation. I think there will have to be some sort of sop. Harry, Harry gave it to them on a plate last night, some little job that he could do for Charles in, 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 in ideally overseas because we need to keep him away from the conservative press. Harry's got a, a real allergy. I mean, he comes out in hives around our, our, our tabloid press. But it doesn't I, work, that. I hope they do, because this is the unravelling, right? This, this, the, what, the you hope they do implode? Yeah, because the, the royal family is a, it's this, it's this fairy tale narrative, and it's, that's why they're so controlled with the media. But now you see Netflix, Spotify, social media, it's impossible to control it. The best thing they could do is engage, and that will pull all but the But is it so out. wrong to have someone we want to wave out on a balcony? You know, after <laughs> the First World War, it, when, when it was the peace, Paris Peace Conference in France, you know, the Brits were going around, well, there's no heart to the celebrations. There's no one to, to wave a flag at. You know, they do actually serve a ceremonial role, something that lifts the nation, albeit maybe 50%. Well, it's part of the nation. I mean, this... I know, come well, on, that's disingenuous. <laughs> this, they that is well the royal family. Well. Great, great fun, though. This is. I'm going to have to intrude. Thank you very Surely much. <laughs> Tessa Dunlop, Gavindi Andrews, thanks very much Thank for your time.